What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, your host. So today when it comes to macOS Sequoia, I'll be happy to let you know that we have a new software update. And as you can see, it's macOS Sequoia 15.4 beta one this is the first developer beta and probably if you are observant of the font and text and just the general layout of software updates in general for mac os sequoia you can see this one the outline and the font sort of looks different from what we are used to so that's essentially the first change but just to put it out there this update came in for me at 5.97 gigs on my 14 inch m1 pro a macbook pro and i was updating from the previous mac os Sequoia 15.3.1 and alongside this update Apple also released iOS 18.4 beta alongside iPadOS 18.4 beta of course we have macOS 15.4 beta this is the video for that and we got device support for macOS 15.4 beta and that's for virtual machines we got tvOS 18.4 beta visionOS 2.4 beta I'm yet to afford to be able to update to this version and watch always 11.4 beta one now this is not all in fact if you have an older mac you can see alongside these updates that are were listed on the apple developer page we also have mac os 13.7.5 rc1 and mac os 14.7.5 rc1 all these were released and if you want to keep up to date and know what these updates have to offer definitely do subscribe to half man half tech as i cover these updates now what I'm going to do is quickly update my device to this new update that we have today and then we're going to look at the new features and changes that this update has to offer. Spoiler alert, there's actually quite a number of new features and changes I'll be highlighting. Just like that, my device is now up to date. If I go into the system settings right here and go to storage, you can see when it comes to macOS, it's actually taking 22.16 gigs and if I click on the info tab right there, you can see the new build number that we have with this update. The build for Mac macOS 15.4 beta is 24E 5206 s it has an s at the end meaning that we are actually going to be getting quite a number of betas and i don't know if you noticed that but my apple intelligent size is actually fluctuating as i speak and you can see what's going on right there sometimes it seems to go higher but it seems to fluctuate between 9.4 gigs and 9.5 five five gigs that's actually a little bit higher than what i had before but it's still not at the size where i would worry much about once my update stabilizes and then i'll let you know what the final apple intelligence size is and i think this fluctuates of course depending on how much apple intelligence you have enabled on your device and how much you use and that actually brings us to our first new feature and change that this update has to offer so once you update your mac you're going to see a new update your mac automatically screen that's going to tell you that your mac will be automatically updated for you and once you click continue you can see there's a new apple intelligence animation that tells you welcome to mac in comparison if you want to see how it used to look before this is how the previous welcome to mac animation used to look and now this is how the new one looks it tries to implement some sort of apple intelligence text and font and colors into the welcome to mac text finally an update that many people longed for that was available on ios has now been brought over into mac os and ipad os and that has to do with the mail application i noticed when i opened it it had a new animation it was like a loading animation and had some sort of apple intelligence animation or glyph interface but i can't actually replicate that i've closed it and opened it multiple times but it won't repeat but now you can see we have mail categories that have been enabled right here so you can see as i click here you know it enables the different categories that we have so we have primary of course and then we have transactions and we have updates alongside promotions if you click on a category that you're already in you can see it will open that category and then if you click on it again it opens up all mail which is 
pretty good and this has also been brought over into the ipad os version another change that also was updated i think this was always existing i'm not 100 percent certain i always assumed but the signal strength that you see right here of the wi-fi represents the actual wi-fi bars that you see so if i was to go away from my studio to a different spot this is actually going to fluctuate and mimic what we have in the top menu bar another apple application that was also updated alongside or with this update is the podcast app so if i open up the podcast it just opened up on my other monitor if i press function control center just to put it right there it's been updated and you can see if we go to the about podcast this is the new version that we have so version 1.1.0 and the build number that you see right there is what i have currently and the update that has been implemented right here is that now when you are searching you can see as i type it's giving me real-time suggestions so if I type like Apple for example you can see what are the different suggestions that it gives me and this will help you find what you are looking for in a more convenient way which actually is long overdue something that doesn't seem to have been updated is actually Gen Emoji right here for macOS that's actually natively available since the previous update so if I put something like a happy Apple just like this I gave it a few minutes gives it you know and then I went into different prompts that I tried so for me it seems to still be the same it's slow and doesn't look like it's polished which is kind of unfortunate and this is Jen Emoji using the messages app that you see right there but something that was actually updated with regards to Apple intelligence is the new Siri I tried it and it seems to respond faster and when you try different prompts it also responds faster and you can see the animation pops up as much or, or much faster than what it used to do before and there is no delay with this icon which is good when it comes to image playground which is you know an apple intelligence application that allows you to generate images using pictures and prompts that you might have you can see when i click on the plus icons and this actually works for even some of the um, prompts that you've generated like this you can always go in and edit and you can see when it comes to the style we have a new style that has been added before we only used to have animation illustration but now the promised sketch style is there and you can choose your existing or create new images using this sketch image style when it comes to apple intelligence just like we saw when apple released the iphone 16e you can see that apple intelligence is now going to be made available in the eu and more languages and regions are going to be supported and this is going to be when the official release of macOS Sequoia 15.4 is released alongside these other versions that you can see right there and you can see here that for uh, iPhone iPad users in EU will have access to Apple intelligence features for the first time and the languages that have been added right there are French German Italian Portuguese, Brazil, Spanish, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese simplified along with localized English for Singapore and India. If you are an Apple News Plus subscriber, under the News Plus tab and the following section, you have access to tens of thousands of recipes, restaurants, reviews, kitchen tips, and more. And this is all going to happen if you are a news plus subscriber apple actually released a news update to let you know of this and you can see it right here apple introduces news plus foods and apple news plus subscribers will soon have access to tens of thousands of recipes among others and you can see right there demoed on the iphone and ipad and you can see that this is coming in april with ipad os 18.4 and these other versions under the notification settings right there you can see if if we go into messages we have this tab that allows me to allow critical alerts and it seems like the banners and the alerts tabs right there have been refreshed and updated and in case you are curious you can see when we go to notification summaries it still says summaries may contain errors just to let you know that notification summaries are in beta if you're a person that uses the apple vision pro and you're waiting for apple intelligence to come to the vision pro then i'll be happy to let you know that with the beta that was released alongside this mac update that we are talking about it's going to bring apple intelligence to the apple vision pro and you're going to have gen emoji among other apple ai functions and features and there's a new application that has been introduced for the apple vision pro and you can also mirror some of the changes to your mac 
Mac and virtually use your Vision Pro as a display. Unfortunately, if you are a user in the UK, I'm not 100% certain whether this is affecting all users, but in order to comply with the latest regulatory requirements and laws, Apple had or was forced to actually disable advanced data protection in iCloud. And so if you're in the UK and you try to turn it on, you might actually encounter a new message and you'll see a pop-up screen that says that this is unavailable for your region, which is kind of unfortunate, but is one that had to be made just for compliance reasons. If we go to the widgets and click where it says edit right there and search for podcast, just like this, you can see we have a new widget and different actually tabs and sizes that we can add to our screen if you want to do that unfortunately though when it comes to the music you can see we actually don't have a widget yet for from apple themselves these ones that you see here are actually widgets of the documents that will try and let you play music that you have downloaded into this application or software but for the actual apple music app there's no widgets right there but the new addition has to do with podcast i've opened up the passwords app on mac so this is this application that you see open in this window right here and you can see apple has updated the ui and they've added this pretty cool animation that tells you how many time how many seconds has elapsed or how much time you have before the codes refresh so you can see they've just refreshed and that's something that's cool to help you know if you have enough time to copy and paste the code into the app into the site or app you're trying to authenticate and you can see it right there when it comes to iphone mirroring some users had actually complained about not being able to use it but as you can see for me i updated my iphone before i updated my mac and you can see if i go to the software update page i'm on ios 18.4 which is on beta i'll release alongside this mac os update we are talking about so for me you can see it's actually working and i tried copying and pasting files and that's working as anticipated one of the issues that i still have after updating has to do with airdrop and some apple intelligence issues maybe i'll give it some time and restart my device but yeah my airdrop still has an issue and when it comes to the official release of this update just to quickly touch on it you can see that apple is highlighting an april release so if i bring up the calendar here and then just center it we we might see the next mac os beta in like beta 2 next week possibly but then the new iphone uh, 16e comes out on the 28th so maybe it, it depends on what apple is going to do but we might get beta 2 next week but if that's not the case then what typically is the case is apple for the first few betas like beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 sometimes they go on two week release cycles so if that's the case then we'll see beta 2 on this week of march 3rd but other than that that's how this update came in for me let me know what you think about this video and if you liked it definitely do hit like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video